Hi, and welcome to Art with Mrs. Torres. Today, we are going to be learning about the rock hopper penguin. Why do they call him the rock hopper penguin? Well, you can see from the photo behind me that he is jumping from rock to rock. This is how he gets around. He doesn't walk very well. He waddles and he can't fly because penguins can't fly, even though they're birds. The way that the rock hopper penguin gets around is he jumps from rock to rock. Now, when we go to the beach, we are able to walk from the ocean onto the sandy shore. However, where the rock hopper penguin lives, which is on the southern tip of South America, the shore is not a soft sandy shore. It's a hard, dangerous, sharp, rocky cliff. So when the ocean waves bring the penguins in from when they've been out at sea hunting, they have to jump from rock to rock and they have to do it quickly before the ocean wave drags them back out again. Sometimes it's going to take them 10 to 15 times to be able to get onto the safe shore. Now, another thing I want you to notice is his fun hairstyle. Look at all those feathers on top of his head. He looks kind of like a rock star, doesn't he? That's what we're going to be drawing today. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait to teach you how to draw a rock hopper penguin. Well, let's get ready to draw our rock hopper penguin. So this silly character, <laughs> he is found in the southern tip of South America, also on the Falkland Islands. Check out the feathers on this guy. Now, when I think of penguin, this is not the kind of penguin I picture in my mind. I found this little character when I was searching for a new project for us. Now, I thought the neatest part about this beautiful penguin is his funny hair. It's really not hair, it's his feathers. Here's another picture of him standing up on a rock. Notice how his eyebrows are bold, bright yellow. And then he has this fun feathered hairstyle on top. He kind of looks like he's a rock star. For today's lesson, you're going to need a white piece of paper for drawing your penguin. You're also going to need a piece of paper for the background. Now, it doesn't have to be black like the paper I used. You could use any color. Blue would be pretty too. Or just another white piece of paper will work fine. You're also going to need a pencil, an eraser, a Sharpie marker, a glue stick, a pair of scissors, and something to color with. I will be using crayons, but markers would also work. I would recommend at least one crayon, and that would be black for coloring the inside of his face. I think that when we color with the marker, his face will get too dark. So I'm gonna have you gather up those items and then meet me back here and we'll begin our project. Welcome back. Now, before we begin, I wanna show you why our penguin is called a rock hopper penguin. Check out these giant cliffs. These rock hopper penguins are jumping from this jagged rock all the way across to this jagged rock here. You'll notice the ocean in the background. So where these penguins live, they have to jump out of the ocean and then onto these very sharp, rocky shores to, for safety. They spend most of their time in the ocean searching for sea life to eat. They eat little tiny shrimp and fish, but then they come up to rest up on these rocks. Now to draw our beautiful penguin, we are going to need first a pencil, an eraser, and our white piece of paper to begin with. Now the first thing we're going to be doing is creating a large penguin in the middle of our paper. We're going to be cutting him out and then gluing him onto another piece of paper when we're done. So let's get a few ideas of what a penguin is going to be looking like. So I went from this photo to get my ideas for my penguin. So the first thing I notice is he has a super fun feathered hairstyle, doesn't he? The other thing I notice is that his face is round like a circle, but his body is more like a rectangle. Now for today, when we're creating our picture, we wanna work kind of big, so we use up most of our white piece of paper. So I'm gonna find the center of my paper and I'm gonna make a little dot. Now once I have a dot in the center of my paper, that way when I'm working, I'm using all of the paper and not just a small bit of the paper. Now everything above this dot is where I'm gonna create my penguin's head. So I'm gonna start by drawing a large circle 
or oval. And you want to make that oval pretty big. Your whole hand should be able to fit inside of that oval. So as you can see in my picture, my whole hand can fit inside my circle or oval. Now the next thing we're going to do is then we're going to design his body and his body has wide shoulders. So I'm going to come down from this area and start to bring his shoulders down. It's going to kind of look like a bowling pin when we start to draw him. If you've ever been bowling, you'll know what I mean. Now the next thing I'm going to do is add his wings on the side. So I'm going to make a big flapping wing on both sides. And you want to make the wings about the same length. So I'm looking here at the bottom of my paper and making sure they both end about the same distance from the bottom of the paper. Making sure his body is bigger than his head. And we're not done yet drawing his head. Now, first thing you're going to notice is that his head is black, but his tummy is white. His shoulders are black, the wings are black on the outside, but the inside they're white. So we're gonna be adding some detail when we color later. The first thing we need to do is connect his head a little bit closer to his body. So I'm just gonna go like this and add a little line on both sides to connect those two. Now I'm gonna come across and draw kind of like a smile from one side to the other. Now everything above this section is going to be black and below this in the middle is going to stay white. Now his head is going to change in just a minute. We're going to start adding those silly feathers once we've drawn his beak. His beak is going to go in the middle of his head here. So I'm going to find the center and make a dot. And I'm going to begin by drawing a rounded curve just above that dot. And you're going to make his beak fairly large. Your whole finger should be able to fit inside that curve. I'm going to erase that dot and then I'm going to bring his beak down to a point. So I'm going to kind of round it on the side and bring it to a point on both sides. Now if you notice his beak has one section here and then a little flap on both sides here and here. You see that? So we're going to add that here by just making a little flap and another one on this side. Make sure his beak comes down a little bit lower than there. Now I'm going to go right above that flap and right next to his beak, I'm going to draw a slight curve. So it's going to at first look like his eyes are closed. You want to make these lines very close to his beak. And then we're going to open up his eyes by making a rainbow. And once you've drawn his eyes, then we're going to add the iris, which is the colored part of his eye. So I'm going to be making a half curve on this side and a half curve on this side. He's going to be looking up at his funny feathers up on top of his head. Now I want you to notice the color of his eyes. They're red. He has red eyes. So we're going to be making his eyes red a little bit later. Now the next thing we're going to draw is another half curve. This is going to be his pupil. Now we're going to make his pupil fairly large. So I'm drawing another half circle in here. And then at the very top, I'm going to draw another small circle. This will be the shiny light in his eyes, the highlight. So to help us not to get confused, I want you to very softly take your pencil and color in his pupil. His pupil is the black dot in his eye. All right, now we're gonna get ready to draw that silly hairstyle and his big, fun, bushy yellow eyebrows. So I'm going to start from the beak here and I'm gonna draw a line that goes up over his eye and around like a rainbow like this. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, up 
over his eye, past his head, and around. And I'm going to draw a few more. Don't draw too many because we'll wait and do most of it with our marker later. But just to remind you how crazy his feathers look. Now, on this photograph, the way the wind is blowing, because it's very, very windy where these penguins live, you can see his feathers kind of curl. On this photograph, this penguin, his feathers aren't quite as long and they stick straight out and they curl a little bit here where the black ones are. So now we got to do the top of his head. So we're going to also add a few long ones sticking up right here. Those ones will end up being black later. And we're going to draw a few short ones up here in the middle. So it kind of got short, medium, and super long. Make sure you have a few coming, curling around. Now the final part is to add the lower part of his beak right underneath here. So I'm just gonna draw a little smile underneath that. And that is the lower section of his beak that you can barely see in this photograph. Once we've created this part of our penguin, we're gonna make sure that we have a division between his white chest and his black body. So right here underneath his chin, I'm gonna round another curve. So this is going to be black and the inside is going to stay white. Black on this side and white on the inside. Now we're going to move on to using our Sharpie marker and changing his face a little bit more. So I'm going to have you now find your black Sharpie marker and we're going to start to go in and ink in our lines. Now I'm going to start here at the neckline and the first thing I'm going to do is the smoother surface. Then I'm going to wait and do the head later. So I'm going to start right here where his neck is and I'm just going to trace around his wing first. Now, when you're using your marker, you want to pull your marker down. Try not to push it, so pulling it towards you. And once I've done his wings, now I'm going to come up about halfway up the body and ink the side of his body. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And then once I've done that, I'm going to go over those lines one more time because I'm going to be cutting this out later and I want to be sure that I could see a nice line for cutting, especially when your scissors get a little bit too close to your lines. You want to have that outline, so I'm just going to darken it up just a little bit more by going over it one more time. We'll erase all of our pencil lines when we're done. Now I'm going to make his face a little chubbier. If you notice in this picture here, his face is a little bit more rounded than mine. So I'm going to make his face a little chubbier on the side. And then right here, we have to separate the white feathers from the black feathers. So right under here, I'm just going to go in and make some soft, feathered lines like this. And now I'm going to divide his white chest separated from his body. So I'm just going to go right in where I drew my pencil line and make him look a little fuzzier. Later, we'll color this in with our crayon. Now there is a separate section on his wing. Part is black and the underside is more white. So right here along the edge of his wing, I want you to draw one more line. We'll color this black later and we'll color the underside of his wing a little bit of gray and leave parts of it white. So now that will be black and the underside will be gray and white. Now let's get ready to do his face. So I'm gonna start up here at the top of his head and then you'll notice he doesn't have a smooth head. He's got these short little pieces that stick up. 
So I'm going to take my marker now right here along the top of his head. I'm not going to outline that circle. Instead, I'm just going to flick my pen and make these a little bit shorter lines right in the very center. Then you'll notice his feathers start getting longer. So now I'm going to start making these lines a little bit longer. And then around the edges, they start to curve out and down. So here I'm going to turn my paper slightly and start to make some lines that shoot out and around, kind of copying what I did with my pencil earlier. When we are finished, we're going to be adding some marker to this and some crayons, and then we will cut this whole bird out. We're going to come down to his beak now and trace his beak. So I'm going to very carefully, holding my pen straight up and down so I get a sharper point, I'm going to start to trace the beak. And then the underside of the beak, that would be his bottom part of his beak. And then I'm going to trace his eyes. So holding my pen straight up and down, sitting up nice and straight in your chair. I'm going to start to outline his eyes. Don't color anything in. Next, I'm going to outline the first half circle. This is going to be colored red later. The next half circle is his pupil. This one we will be coloring in black. It's colored in with the pencil right now, but we'll use our marker a little bit later. And then our little half circle up at the top is the shiny light. So the only thing I want you to color right now with your marker is the black pupil, which is around that small circle. When you're all finished coloring in, black pupil. Now we're going to go in and start to add this crazy eyebrows. Now there's another penguin called the macaroni penguin. What a fun name. And the macaroni penguin also has these crazy feathers, but he doesn't have the whole rock star hairstyle. He only has bushy eyebrows and his coloring is a little bit more orange. So once I got these crazy eyebrows outlined in, I'm just gonna go in and add some short little feathers right here, right in between. All right, now we're gonna go and take our magic rubber eraser and we're going to uh, pause our video and erase all of our pencil lines then meet me back here when you're done erasing. Welcome back. I have erased my pencil lines and now we're going to start to color in our rock hopper penguin. Now the first color I want you to look for in your crayon set is yellow. We're going to take that yellow and we're going to start to use our yellow crayon first in the beak. So I'm going to go in and put a little bit of yellow crayon in the whole section of the beak. The beak is orange, but we're going to put an undercoat of yellow first. It's going to make our orange even brighter later. Now the next section we're going to be coloring yellow is his iris. This is the color part of his eye. We're going to be making it red later, but we're going to build up that color. So we're going to put a little yellow in there. And then we're going to take that yellow and we're going to start to yellow up his eyebrows. Now, if you have a marker, you can also use a marker for doing this. And the colors are very bright with the marker. So this is what it looks like with the marker. And this is looks, what it looks like when I use my crayon. So the crayon looks nice too, but you'll see that the marker is just a little bit brighter. So go in and color in the eyebrows. Make sure some of those yellow feathers go all the way to the edge of your black marker lines. Now you'll notice he's black in the center of his head. He's only yellow kind of where his crazy eyebrows are. So now right up here, we're gonna be using our black 
crayons later, not right now. All right, so we've done yellow, and now we're going to move on to the next color, and that is orange. You're going to now grab the orange, and you're going to put some orange in the beak. So the yellow is a nice first color, and then I'm going to go in and fill in the beak now with the orange on top of the yellow. It's going to make that orange really beautiful and bright now. I'm leaving a little bit of just yellow by itself on the side here, just so it looks like his beak's kind of shiny. You don't have to do that, but if you want to, you can. I'm going to add a little bit of orange into his iris, which is the color part of his eye. When I'm done with my orange, my next color I need to look for is red. I'm going to take my red crayon and I'm going to color some red into his eyes. Leaving a little bit of the orange showing also. Now for our final color uh, for our rock Hopper Penguin, we're going to be using gray and black. I should say find your colors, two colors, gray and black. So I'm going to be using my gray first and then black next. So if you notice in his feathers, even though his chest is white, there is a lot of gray. And the gray is almost a shadow. So I'm going to come right here and color a little bit of a shadow underneath his chin along the underside of his head. I'm going to also color a little gray very softly around the side of his chest. And then I'm going to go in and add a little bit of feathers in the middle. So if you notice, you can kind of see these little marks throughout his chest. So I'm just going to kind of make a little fuzzy row of scribbles and some different places. It'll kind of make it look like he's fuzzy and soft. It's not flat and smooth. Another place I see gray is underneath his wing. So I'm going to put a little bit of gray underneath his wing. And I'm going to leave a little bit white also. I'm going to take a gray and I'm going to put a little bit of gray on the under part of his beak. So it's a little bit darker than the top beak. When I'm all finished with my gray, my next color I'm going to work with is black. So now I'm going to start to go in and color all of the parts of him that are black. I'm going to start up here at the top of his head, right between his eyebrows that are yellow, and I'm going to start coloring straight up and down very softly with my crayon. So you'll notice that by using the black crayon instead of a black marker, you can see in between the lines of the marker that we use. So it's still looking black, but it puts a little bit of depth in our picture so it doesn't look quite so flat. I'm also gonna take my black crayon, not too much, and draw a few feathers coming out the side. You can see the difference. Do the same thing on this side. We're going to be cutting him out. It's going to look so cool. Now I'm going to start to color his face. So I'm going to do an even coat all over his face. So I'm just going to take my marker and move it very gently across the whole face around his beak and underneath his eyes. Make sure that you have a few pieces of paper underneath. See how I have some extra paper? That way you don't leave any uh, texture on your picture from something that might be on the surface of your desk. So I'm very carefully coloring his face. I'm going to start to very gently go in and fill in the little spaces around his eyes and right underneath his eyebrow. Now the first coat of black is going to look gray. And then once I have my first coat in, now I can go in and color a little darker. So now I'm pressing a little bit harder. This is my second coat. Still being careful around his beak and his eyes. Still coloring as best I can in one direction. And 
And then in my final coat, I'm just gonna make him a little darker right around the edge. And one more time over his cheeks. Now I'm gonna cover the edge of his wing with the black crayon on both sides. And my final part to color black is all of this side of his body, not the underside of his wing, all of this section here. So when we are finished coloring our rock hopper penguin, then we're gonna cut him out and mount him onto a different piece of paper. So a couple of the things that I thought were so fascinating about the rock hopper penguin is he is one of the smallest penguins. He is about the size of a soda bottle. So if you could picture one of those soda bottles that uh, you can buy at the grocery store, that's about how big he is. So he's not very big, but he's a powerful swimmer. So once again, I'm gonna show you this photograph. I want you to see what he has to do, he or she. They swim in the ocean. They spend most of their time in the ocean looking for food. And then they gather up that food in their mouth or in their belly. They bring it back to land and then to rest, they have to get out of the ocean and onto the, onto the shore. Now, when you and I go to the beach, we're just able to walk up onto the beach, but where these penguins live, this is what their beach looks like. It's big, hard, sharp rocks. They literally have to be smashed onto the shore, onto these rocks by the big ocean waves. And then once they get onto the shore, they hop, hop, hop onto these rocks. That's why they're called rock hoppers. And then unfortunately the wave will come back in and crash on them again and pull them out to sea. So it's the struggle that they have to do to get onto shore to safety. So now, once we are all done coloring your penguin, I want you to take your scissors and we're gonna cut them out. So first thing I'm doing when I'm cutting, I call it my chunky cut. Now my chunky cut is the big cut. It's not being super careful perfect. It's just getting rid of all the big sections. Now, when you're working, you don't wanna have to pick up all these pieces of paper that are landing on the floor. So make sure you're sitting up straight over your desk and that you have a big piece of paper underneath you. It can be a piece of newspaper or whatever background paper you have on your desk. That way, when we're done, we can just scoop them up into our background paper and then throw it in the trash, the scraps. So this is chunky cut. So as you notice, I'm not cutting perfect. I'm just getting rid of all this big, extra paper around the edge. So right here, when I get next to his feathers, I'm just gonna cut right next to the feathers. See up here, now if you notice, there's a big space down here, so I'm gonna cut a little bit closer. And on the sides. So when I do that chunky cut, it gets rid of all the big pieces of paper. And now it's easier for me to take my scissors and go in and be a little bit more careful with my cutting. Now, as you notice, as I'm cutting, my little pieces of paper are gonna land on my desk. So I want you to go in and start cutting your body and your wings. And then I want you to stop when you get to the head. We'll do this next. So pause your video, go ahead and cut out your body and your wings, and then I want you to stop right here when you get to the neck. I'll see you back in just a minute. Okay, I have cut out my wings and my body, and now I'm gonna start working on the texture of the feathers by his head. So I'm gonna very carefully cut next to my lowest feather, so right here. Now I need to cut this piece away. I'm going to be really careful as you're cutting this part so we don't cut off all of those beautiful feathers. You'll notice that I'm rotating my paper as I'm cutting. My scissors are doing a good job, but I want to rotate my paper as I'm cutting to get into those little corners and sections. Now, once I've cut away 
the paper from the side of my penguin's head, now I can start to work on that fun hairstyle. So the way that I do this is I hold the paper this direction. So as I start to cut in and out to get those lines, let me show you the original picture here. All these little pieces and scraps are going to start to land on my desk because I'm holding my paper this way. So look at the difference. So here, you can't see the spaces in between, but here you can. So this is how I do it. I hold my paper and my hand is not holding the scissors and I'm gonna go in and cut a small triangle section out. So I see a little, little gap right here in the middle. So I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut in part way. And then again, you're gonna see this little triangle piece fall out. See that piece that just fell out? So that leaves that little space there. Now I'm gonna go over here and cut another one of those. And this one I'll go a little farther in or a little less farther in. And sometimes you have to kind of pull the piece a little bit gently. So you can see, now the most important part is once you're done cutting, you wanna make sure this little edge comes to a point. So I'm just gonna go up and snip it just a little bit more to make it a nice sharp point there. Now I'm gonna do it again. I'm just gonna go in a little section, another little piece so a triangle falls out onto the paper below. But remember, we don't wanna leave it flat. We wanna make it come to a point. So I'm just gonna carefully take my scissors and make a point on the end. See how I did that? And I'm gonna continue cutting all the two sides this way. Don't worry about the top right now. So I want you to just go in cutting some chunky triangles out. And when you're finished, I'm gonna meet you back here. So I'm just gonna keep doing this on this side and on this side. So go ahead and pause your video, we'll do those two sections. We'll do the top at the very end. Meet me back here once you're done. Okay, I'm back now. I want you to notice I forgot to do something on this side compared to this side. I'm gonna to point to the ends and you'll see that these ones are pointed. This one is not pointed and none of these are pointed except for that one. So I need to go back in with my scissors now and make sure that those come to a point. So I'm just gonna take a little bit off the edge so it comes to a point. I'm just gonna kind of curve my scissors a little bit to snip those into a sharp little point. See how those look a lot more natural now? That one I need some work on too. So make sure that as you are cutting that all of your little feathers come to a point at the end. It's gonna make them look even more natural. Gotta correct this one. And then we're gonna do the top of his head. Now the top of his head, the feathers are a little shorter right up here. So I'm going to turn my paper this direction. And now I'm going to snip these sections a little closer to my final pen line. So right here, I'm going to cut my chunky cut a little closer. And I'm a little closer to the edge now. And now I can go in and start to cut in my little pieces. make my spiky feathers. And I'm doing that and then I'm gonna cut this now. So now I'm just gonna go like this, snip, 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 snip. Making sure that you're cutting little tiny triangles out so that when you lay it down, you can see these little individual little spikes. So go ahead, pause your video, finish cutting the top of the head, and then meet me back here and we'll mount our picture together. Welcome back. It's time to get ready to mount our picture on our background. So you might have chosen a black piece of paper. You might have chosen a blue piece of paper, a green, or maybe you have a white piece of paper that you're going to just draw something fun on the background. You're gonna be using glue stick. And here's my um, hint about the scraps. If you are cutting paper and you work on top of another piece of paper, see, then you can gather up those scraps, take them away to your trash can, dump them in the trash can, and then come back 
with a clean surface underneath you when you are gluing. I would like you not to glue your picture near your background paper. You wanna flip your picture over. When you are applying glue, my trick is to always apply glue very carefully around the edge and then an X through the middle. Now we have to be kind of more careful up here at the top. So what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of glue right here. I'm not gonna glue the tips. I'll show you why in just a minute. I'm gonna add a little bit of glue to the side of his face. So I'm just gonna kind of trace the side of his face and trace an outline of the entire penguin. Now my glue is gonna to start to dry quickly. So I'm gonna put a second coat, working fast. Now I'm working with a purple glue today, which dries clear, just so that you can see it on the camera. Then I'm gonna make a big X right through the middle. I'm gonna carefully take my picture, turn it over, place it right at the very bottom so it lines up in the center at the bottom. My paper, making sure my wings fit, and they do. All right, well, I hope you had fun today learning about our rock hopper penguin. I'm gonna be taking my fingers right here and just kind of curling a little bit of his feather so they kind of stick up. I had fun teaching you today. I hope you had fun learn, learning about our rock hopper penguin, and I will see you for our next lesson. Have a great day.